right, we are ready to start shelling corn. We went and got the head out here last night. Fully serviced the combine. We had to push that straw chopper back. We greased it, washed the windows, had to make a couple of other minor adjustments. And we are now ready to go. If you recall, last winter, we ended up completely rebuilding this head. We've got four out of the six, or maybe it was five out of the six gearboxes have been replaced. And we are now ready to test it out. We also put a uh, rain salt on this. All we've done with this combine so far is we've done just weed. And this grain salt area here, the bottom side of this grain bed, we were leaking out back here, we were leaking corn, and we ended up putting a whole new salt in there. We replaced both grain bed augers, we replaced the vertical auger, and we replaced the short section of the unload auger, the outer extension had already been uh, replaced. So we put like 25 grand into this, didn't we, Christian? Yeah. It came out of my pocket. You were featured in the last video, so we'll, we'll feature you this again one too. in this video too. So. I, I look good? Yeah, yeah. Christian took a 30 day leave of absence yeah. and we're glad to have you back. Okay. We knew he'd be back. So. I knew it. Yeah. But you were, all the good ones come back. All the good ones come back. They have to. Yeah, that's right. It's all have to Yeah. <laughs> all right, so we're going to get fired up. We've only got 180 acres to do this year. So it's going to be a short run. That's right. It'll be a very short run. All right. That's right. So get it over there in one piece now, all right? Taking that? Either, yeah. yeah. All right. All right, so we're gonna get out on the road here. We've only got like 30 acres of dry corn to do and 150 acres of wet corn uh, to do. The wet corn is too wet. I don't have enough of that ready right now. I've got about 60 acres that would go and the other 90 needs a little time. So this dry corn is, uh, I'm get her in high gear here. Oh, we're right in Alex's way. Uh, this dry corn, This dry corn uh, was planted like the fourth day of planting and it is at like 16 to 16 and a half percent. So I thought if we screwed around with that for a little bit and then got into the last of the corn, the last 90 acres that's rather wet now, if we did that very last, that would maybe be next week hopefully it's dry enough to shell but where we are going now is the furthest farm away from home we've got some trucks headed to the field and uh, we'll see you guys when we get there well we're into the following day and we're at a different machine we took the combine to the field yesterday and just as soon as we pulled in the field, it started raining, which we knew there was rain in the forecast. Just didn't know how much. So we ended up parking things up. All we had was a couple of trucks over there. And we've got a couple of trucks to get moved over there yet again now. And what we're doing is we are headed over with the uh, grain buggy 
I ended up filling out the planted wheat acre crop map sheets and Sarah has taken them over to the FSA office. We've got until the 15th to uh, report that, 15th of November. Today is October 30th. So she'll get them turned in and then after they get worked through them I'll have to go over and give them a couple of signatures and then that'll be done. But we've got a real nice day here upon us, and we should be able to get some corn combined. So we are about seven or eight miles away from the combine, and when we get there, we will get it dialed in, show you how things are coming together. So, we'll catch you guys when we get there. Well, here we are. We had moved equipment over here yesterday. And uh, as soon as I pulled that, it started sprinkling. I said, wow, there's rain in the forecast. And uh, it's just going to continue, probably going to continue to rain. So we'll just park things up. And we'll get started the following day and here we are. So this is a grain corn, a grain variety. I display is all 2600 that doesn't want to fire up here. So I don't know what the moisture is coming in but I hand shelled some off and that was at 16 and a half percent here the other day. So we've got dust coming out the back. make a round here and uh, we'll just get have to take a sample with a handheld sampler until this display decides to fire up. We've got a Gen 5 and a 4640 display that we're not currently using but this old combine doesn't like those newer displays. We have to either run the 2600, which we have two of these, and two 2630s. And uh, the 2630s are both being used. So, looks like we're going to have to switch one of them displays out with uh, one of the, either the 4640 or that Gen 5. So, I don't, I'm not going to know what my yield is until we get stuff loaded up here and we send it off to Genoa. No bells or buskers going off. I would suspect everything is alright. We can probably stop back up quick. See what there is on the ground. Field's not that big, so we could wait until we see our next pass. Looks like we got a lot of full cobs there. For the most part, doesn't look like we got any grain on the on the ground, so we should be good. So I'm going to put you guys down here now, and uh, I'm just going to keep at it. We have not got that much to do. Alright. making our second time around and uh, yeah, everything is going the way it's 
supposed to. And it is working beautifully. Of course it should. Put a lot of money in the head. And uh, looks like things are going pretty good. The window is full. The tank is getting there. I don't know what my yields are. This thinking display is not come to life here. So that's not good. But we're going to keep at it. It's uh, probably going to be a long day of just this dry corn here. We'll get this done. And we'll get the combine moved home and start in on uh, wet. different crop but on that plastic boot there's a rubber flap that 
and bolts from one side of the plastic part of that boot to the other and we kept blowing it off last year so we we kept blowing the whole boot off so what we did is we just left the rubber unbolted Let's see how it does here a little bit of wheat probably got to come out but this is dry corn too what we were unloading off of it last year when we had trouble with that boat was wet corn and we just felt that the auger was pushing too much corn out this does have the high speed unload kit on it you wouldn't think it would be in a small combine but it does and there's really not that heavy of a stream coming out of that but uh, it had something to do with it last year so, got a pretty pretty good sample in the tank we've got a lot of dust on the back cab glass here I see we got a leaf right there but for the most part we're in good shape so we'll get this load loaded up and uh, if my father wants to take it or Sarah might take it we might run without the grain buggy I've got to get the truck right in the field and being that we haven't got that much to do we can let these guys spread manure get that job heavily going and not interrupt anybody and we'll just kind of tiptoe with this corn here but that's what things look like inside the tank shined up and we're going to have this truck here loaded and I don't know what my yield's doing because this stinking display is in frozen mode but I've dumped two bins on this truck already now we're getting ready to put the third one on and this uh, boot has remained to have, is so far has been on the auger, which dry corn, it shouldn't blow it off anyways. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes once we get into wet corn after we get this farm here done. So my father should be here in a few minutes. He's going to take this load and then Sarah's going to take the uh, next one. I don't know what the moisture is. I have not even checked it. Um, the display here is out of whack. Uh, the little handheld this, uh, unit that I have 
doesn't read quite accurate anyway. And I'm harvesting this regardless. I'm not going to stop doing it at 16, 17%. And it is what it is. Combine's doing a phenomenal job. Perfect stuff going on in there. And, uh, this field done and move on to uh, the next one here. Sarah should be over here by then and she's going to take the next load. I'll just combine it direct, load it right on the truck. The, gr the trouble with the grain buggy is it's, it's a lot of wasted time. to keep everybody busy so you can see oh we got an ear that must have fell off a stalk right there because I see kernels on the ground hold that back so we ain't putting it in a tree but every once in a while you see a full cob of corn that didn't end up going through the uh, stalk chopper so we got a little bit of a triangle here and we're going to be done with this field all right we'll keep at it here well we are into this next field Sarah's over here and this is going to be the first load that we have done with corn loading on the go. This field's on a little bit of a side hill and we're leaning downhill on the auger. So I don't like it all that well doing it this way but it is what it is. We got the buzzer going off and we need to offload. Everything has been working perfectly. You need to watch what I'm doing here so that I don't bust that boot off with the bows on the grain bucket. You can see we're getting close there. So, this load here that we're loading up, Sarah's gonna take, and then we're gonna be running solo with no grain bucket operator. But we'll be able to load direct into the truck from the combine. We got the truck right in the field. Uh, we need one more bin for that truck that she's going to take a load on. And then by then my father should be back here and we've got one of the other guys bringing another couple of trucks over for us so that we can get done uh, in this area. I don't like the way the contour of the ground is up here. Like it if that bin was empty. So she's slowing down. She knows we're gonna stop. She can detect it as well. And then we're gonna keep the boot on the log. Ground tips a little more up here, and I have slightly come off my row. Anywho, how? So we'll get this uh, bin empty. And then what we'll do is we'll back up a little bit and get back on our roll. Ah, this has been a beautiful fall. Just an absolute beautiful fall. It's been dry. Real dry. Where they're spreading manure, it got raided yesterday. Sarah and Christian ended up getting the Teradis on hook from the 9560. I said you better get hooked on to that chisel plow and head up to where they're spreading manure and start doing some damage control. So 
so she got up there they never stopped spread manure it uh, never got wet enough to stop that process and she says hey I really don't need to do anything here do you want me to just park it I said yeah actually you can do some fall tillage we had some sod fields that we had herbicide applied to them they're going to be switched over to corn here uh, in the spring. My buzzer's still going off because I tore it up on the hopper. And uh, that land is rented ground and the landlord doesn't like the manure on the ground. Doesn't like to smell it. But we're spreading right next door. So, I guess and it is what it is. But Sarah was chisel plowing that ground. She said the ground is freaking hard. She said that she was down at a lower gear than she's used to. And it's working the 9560. I said, well, you can wait till it rains. She said, I'd rather do it now. Okay. That's, that's okay too. Be that much uh, less. One hand is no good. So I said that'll work too. It'll work good to get this sod ground chiseled now and it'll break up over winter here. Providing that the ground freezes hard enough. It'll freeze out all them clumps. And uh, that ground will fit up like powder. Uh, this coming spring so she has made her way to the road she's got to go about a mile and a half that away I'll float on the truck and then she'll come back in another one and then that will load up her load so we're gonna keep at it I guess keep going try to stay on the road we are on four and two so our guest row is right there guy that planted the corn didn't do too bad. He had it matched up pretty well for six rows of harvesting to get done. Busy road right here. That's Route 31 right there. And we got to do a little climbing to get up on the road. Neighbors down the road there. He's harvesting some corn with a couple of John Deere combines himself. I was just talking to him last night. He said he picked himself up a real nice used John Deere combine out of Indiana here. I don't know if it was last week or the week before. It's a 9500 series. I don't know if he said it was a 50 or a 60, but he said it was a cherry unit. And uh, they're going hard up there. They are. Uh, right at it. They got a couple of green buggies in the field. Two or three combines running. And they're getting right after it. They have uh, another 9560. But it's a side hill version of this particular model that we have. Right here. So, lots of corn getting harvested in the area. So we'll keep at it here. All right, so we are done with dry corn. And we're moving the equipment back towards home. We are crossing the railroad tracks right now. And the timer on these bars that come down is off a little bit if you recall last year Sarah was crossing the tracks with the terra disc or chisel plow or something she just got across the tracks the bars went down and then boom the train went through like seven seconds later so we're a little uh, 
more careful about when we cross. We almost stop before we go across the tracks now because that warning is not triggered correctly. So that train goes through there. It must go through like seven or eight times a day. This guy's turning, but he doesn't have a trailer on, so that's good. Keep coming, buddy. Keep coming, I got you. Oh, he wants me to go. Okay. Maybe he forgot that he doesn't have a trailer on there. Don't have to take that wide, buddy. So, that's going to uh, do it for this video. Got a little squirrely back there. And we'll catch you at the next one. We're going to be getting into uh, high moisture corn now. I've got to fill with fuel. And we got to move some trucks to the field. And we'll go ahead and get started. So that's what you'll see in the next video is the start of high moisture corn. I tested some late planted uh, 96 day grain corn that we planted on the 16th or the 18th of June here on Monday. Today's Friday and that wouldn't even read on the tester. It said the moisture level was above the limit. Well, I got 35% in there today. So we're going to start on some stuff that was 36% and now that's down to 32%. So it's probably going to be closer to 35 once we get into it with the combine. So that's where we're at. We'll be home here in half hour, 45 minutes and then we've got to travel 7 or 8 miles the other way to get to... Uh, fields that we have high moisture corn at. So take it easy folks. Catch you at the next one.